Uh, we hope that by the time that we're finished healing the land where we're at now, that those who have been there from the very beginning will then uh, either have a, someone that they that they have taught um, who can go to the new land, or, or either they will leave and, and go to the new land and start a whole new project. Um, we want people from all over the globe to be able to come to our land and we want to go to their land you know see if we can get some exchanges going of information and and of sharing you know um, I think that the more that we put it out out there the more that that uh, more communities are forming and and the most difficult thing for for anybody out there listening the most difficult thing that you will ever do with trying to start a community like this is making the first step of making the commitment to do it because uh, we committed ourselves a long time ago to doing this and we've worked very diligently and very hard on making it come uh, about and making it come together none of us have any money we're all flat broke always have been it's the way we are um, it didn't stop us. We have what we need, and and what we will need in the future, we will also work together to get. It doesn't take. You don't have to have money. I know there's a lot of people that are out there that says I can never do this because I live hand to mouth. You know, paycheck to paycheck. We all do, but it is possible. You've just got to be committed and find a group that can work with you and work together to find what you need. It wasn't easy, but we did do it. You know, it can be done. Patty? Yes. Patty, can I interrupt here? We've got a message from Nisi saying that Tammy Pepperman would like to be pulled into the conversation. Oh, awesome. Let me get her. Let me get her. Hold on, Tammy. Yeah, I'm coming. Her. I'm coming, Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I like her picture. She's got, she's got the, uh, the, what do they call it, American Gothic, and they've got gas mask on. <laughs> That's oh yeah, pretty cool. I got it. <laughs> hey, Tammy, how are you welcome, doing? Welcome, Tammy. Hello, Tammy. Hey, how are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Very well. We're doing very well. Glad, glad to have you on. Oh, it looks like I shut off or something. No, you're good. We can hear you. You're good. Can you hear oh, us? Good. I have. Yep, I can now. How are you? I'm doing very, very good. Uh, uh, are you talking? Uh, are you coming to uh, uh, join our community? <laughs> are you gonna? <laughs> well, I just heard about it. It, it. it sounds very, very interesting. It's just been so long since I talked to you guys and. Um, Denise was telling me about the conversation tonight, and so I thought I'd drop by and see what's going on. Well, that's freaking awesome. I, I, I know you're so busy. Every time I see you, I know you work real uh, a lot with, with No Borders Radio, and I see your videos on YouTube all the time. I mean, you never stop. You're just constantly at it. Uh, you do a lot of great work. It's good that you could stop by. Thank you. It's great to hear you guys. I'm just going to mute out so I can listen for a little while, and then I'll I'll touch base as when I have an opinion or something. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. I'm so glad to hear you guys. Yeah, we're glad to have you. It's really a special. It's a, it's a special treat. <laughs> Thank you for having me, and it's the same thing. We've been doing so well. It's they keep us busy by what they're doing, you know, but it, sooner or later it's going to slow down. I mean, we're kicking their butts left and right, and then they're cannibalizing each other. So I don't think it'll be much longer until we're actually free from their oppressive forces here. Well, what do you want while we're on that topic, if, it, topic, if it's okay, Snowhawk? Uh, I'd like to quiz Tammy on that a little bit. Yep, right ahead. Um, what do you see, you know, there's... Uh, a lot going on. I, I've been watching the stock market. Um, this new uh, appointee that they're going to put in for the Fed. Uh, all the things that are going on in the politics. And then I, I read something the other day. I found out that it was just uh, it was an old article or something about Obama having a, a nervous breakdown. It was wishful thinking. But um, 
I can see that, that what they're doing, like with this uh, exercise that's coming up in, in uh, October, and uh, uh, what, they're, what they're talking about with these pandemics, they're, they're pitching up the fever pitch. I mean, it's, it's fear, 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 fear. Uh, we've got embassies that are being bombed, a mall that's being bombed uh, over in Kenya. What, you know, um, all of this is supposed to uh, uh, get us into a frenzy. Do you think that they're getting ready to move uh, against uh, well, the no, people here? What, what? Oh, no, absolutely not. What has happened is um, we went after them. We sued them as a sovereign state under 28 U.S.C. 97, the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act under the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity and we won the case we nailed them for human trafficking and part of that was under the shipping statutes under 46 usc chapter 311 and 313 we went in and we said well you volunteered to assume the charge and that was not argued and we won the case well eventually well look let me back up to march um what I had done is I threw myself under the bus so that they, I could evidence them injuring me. So the judge came in and injured me personally. Um, these attorneys were just ro railroading us just like everybody else. And so I allowed this to happen and um, evidence their crimes. Well, that's a bad move on their part. Um, they have an Ely Mocenary Trust in every country called a Federal Reserve or a Reserve. And what that means is that I'm part of that reserve. Feminism is reservation on my rights. Masculism is reservation on male rights. Islamism is reservation on Islamic rights. Zionism is reservation on um, Zionist rights. Uh, environmentalism is reservation on the environment. You know, all of these things are political tools of redistribution. Um, so what had happened is we went ahead and sent that off to the International Monetary Fund because that violates their member agreements. This was done on March 5th. By March 8th, the United States Incorporated was removed from their membership in the International Monetary Fund for a short amount of time. So in order for them to garner that funding again, they have to evidence that they're protecting us. And on the flip side of that, in between, we were going through U.S. District Court under the um, uh, Restrictive Principle of Sovereign Immunity and Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. In between, we had maintained the uh, agreed entry with the holding corporation, um, offering them immunity if they upheld the law. Now, if they didn't, they were also going to be indicted for human trafficking because what's happening is that upon your birth um, a birth record is initiated that thing is considered a manufacturer statement of origin it's not the birth certificate the birth certificate is only the, the docking instrument um, where you're docked at because under the uh, master lend lease agreement that roosevelt and churchill entered into so upon that vessel being born here and the manufacturer statement of origin it's the action of bottom re being facilitated. So your diagnosis is injured. The second you're born, your diagnosis is being delivered. And so they start cashing in on those amounts. Under bottom re, the, the um, keel of the vessel is sealed. Okay, the, the bottom of the vessel. That means the footprint on the document. And then the state seal is put on the foot of the document, sealing it and entering that child into perpetual servitude. Uh, under the action of debenture, which is a debt secured by your own earning power. And this goes all the way back to the um, Articles of Confederation of uh, October 15, 1777, where uh, under Article 12, you were pledged and I was pledged and charged to discharge congressional bankruptcy. Now, every time you go into court, a judge otherwise known as the bank, as defined in Black's first, Black's Law Dictionary, first edition, um, that judge has taken an oath to Congress to discharge their bankruptcy by throwing you under the bus. And what people are not aware of is, first of all, there's a presumption of death. That presumption is overcome if you answer a summon for the dead. When you answer a court summon asking for the dead to appear, you're saying, I'm dead, 
and you're overcoming the presumption of death. Now you are, are actually dead. There's another function and facet to that on the other side by which the banks are allowing you to say that you're dead as well with something known as a mortgage or a dead pledge. Every time you sign a mortgage, you're saying, I'm dead. I'm dead. Yep, that's me. And um, you're being held as a felon, first of all, for claiming the last name, which is a family name, meaning you're a new species or genus of human. That last name describes us. Uh, my maiden name was Erickson. There's others with the name Smith, meaning they're a blacksmith or silversmith. Um, there's a name like Champagne. That's where they came from, Champagne, France. And so that's the thing that they have a patent on, under the letters patent. And so by you using that thing, you're being held as a felon here in the United States under 18 USC, United States Code, subsection 1342. And so no matter what, you're always in that chute. Every time you check the mail and you use and assume that fictional name, you're posting your own bonds as a felon and you have no idea. Later on, they're going to attack you using the IRS or medical or psychological industry or criminal industry in some way. There's only three forms of production on this planet. Taxation and consumption is one third of all GDP, gross domestic product. Medicine, psychology, and death is one-third of all GDP. And criminalization is a third of the global GDP. There is no other form of production on this planet. And so what we did was we came in and sued them for this human trafficking schematic, and we won. Now, in July, the International Monetary Fund came in and said, oh, okay, we're going to do an unwinding. And what that means in the financial sector is that the new surety is not you. It is a fiction known as banks, bankers, which are also attorneys, and the dead things that we couldn't find in our case because we came in and we were looking all over for them according to this Esther K. Vyak. Couldn't find anybody. They weren't living. They were all fictions. And so we, were, we had no other option than for our judge to declare them dead and send that off to the clearinghouse. Now, the Secretary of State is the clearinghouse discharging congressional bankruptcy. And since that time, that's what you're seeing in the media. All of these shows that you're seeing in Syria right now, those are all CIA productions. If you go back to um, book four of the church uh, committee reports, you'll find that the CIA is just a production company. All it does is goes into another country and creates a civil war over here or it brings down the uh, World Trade Center. That's all the CIA. That's all they do. They did it in Vietnam. They did it in Korea. They did it in the Gulf. They're doing it now in Syria. And all of these presentations are for you to consent to these things. And once people start consenting or stop consenting, it rewrites itself. But right now, yes, they are in an un unwinding um, they're shifting their policy and structure according to uh, J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan called out for the obliteration of the Burgoy Constitutions, which means liberalism. You cannot no longer use feminism, Zionism, masculism, Islamism, environmentalism. You, they have to go after the fiction. And we're seeing that all over the globe now. Judges are being charged with crimes um, yesterday in Utah. A judge was nailed up on uh, by the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency for Trafficking Drugs. Um, they hit Duluth, Minnesota recently for trafficking in human beings between Canada and the United States. Um, last week, they took out one of their one of their head uh, CIA agents for doing his job. Musowitz was in Singapore, actually. Um, garnering a defense company on behalf of the United States Incorporated in the midst of all this and all of a sudden they just they can't get their hands back fast enough and have charged him with bribery although that's his function that was his function as an operations officer on behalf of the CIA but things are really looking better I mean I, I don't know if you're noticing it um, there's less chemtrails in the sky they can't afford it anymore their funding's been cut um, they cannot receive any special drawing rights unless they're protecting somebody. And they have to evidence that they're not protecting them to death. They have to evidence that they're actually protecting human beings if they want their funding now. Well, 
Uh, I know that they're, they've been chemtrailing here crazily with, for the last couple weeks, but um, they're ending the drought in this area, I think. Um, we saw okay. some really bizarre clouds. But um, what you were saying about uh, making these changes, what about what about this, um, uh, the... I don't know if you deal with this or not. I know that you, that you deal with the court systems and all of this. But something that's really got me uh, very worried uh, is, is this, uh, the health care law that's coming up uh, and the unconstitutional, uh, unconstitutionality of it to begin with on the face of it. But the fact that, that even though they've defunded this, this uh, bill, it does nothing to stop the taxation that is already implemented and which will uh, step up, uh, I think it's after January, that uh, the real cost of, of this Obamacare is going to be hitting the, the middle class and the lower class uh, severely. Uh, and... and they're defunding it, which means they're t they're going to take money from other areas that were part of this Obamacare, and that would include probably things like Medicare, things like, uh, and, and I'm not 100% sure, but usually when these things happen, uh, they do, they take away uh, these necessities, cut them back and stuff. Um, is there any way that we can fight that as far as the taxation of it? Uh, are you guys putting together any type of, of workable uh, solution for that? Or, or uh, uh, is there something that, that is already in place? A absolutely. And it, and it goes beyond, we don't argue constitutionality. The Constitution is theirs. They perverted it. Um, it ended at Article 1, Section 9, Clause 3. No... Uh, bill of attender or ex post facto law shall be passed. That means that's the end of the document. After that, Congress, who's your transgressor, that's what we sued. We went up against the foreign state. The Confederacy is a criminal enterprise, as defined in Black's Law Dictionary. And um, what's happening is, and it's, it, it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around in the very beginning, um, everything, every court process, every everything you know as life and be living is in insurance it's in insurance when you subscribe to that the word sub means below and scribe means right right so underwrite when you underwrite that you're underwriting the policy life insurance policy the health insurance the medical insurance policy now when you go to cms.gov you'll see what I'm talking about. Go to cms.gov. Now go to the World Health Organization and pull up what's known as the International Classification of Diseases and Disorders. When you enter into the court process and somebody says you're injured, you're being diagnosed as being brought into law. And so if you look at the international classification of diseases and disorders, mental health is, in a, is a uh, diagnosis. Harm upon you is a diagnosis. When they say that you've injured a building, they're actually claiming that you are brought into law injured, and they're diagnosing you for any number of reasons. And on the back end, they're cashing in on this. This is how they're moving your estate around. They're cashing in on any and all diagnosis, pretending again, under the federal reservation, to be your trustee under that eliminary trust umbrella. And so you, you need to stop patronizing it, first of all. That's what Jesus was trying to explain. Don't call it your dad. Don't call it your father. Don't call anything else your father. That's what patriotism means. It stems from the word patre, patriot. Okay, so you need to stop and really look at what Congress is doing. They have been your pimps since the 1600s when they raised your estate. Now, if you go all the way back to the 1600s and the original uh, charters, you know, in school, we were taught that we seceded from England or seceded from Spain or seceded from France, correct? And they've used that terminology saying you've come away from something. Now, in Black's Law Dictionary, 
Secession or to secede means to take over an estate. It never meant they went away from anywhere. It just means that they took what was yours and claimed it as theirs. And now they're claiming to be the trustee of that thing. And when you patronize it, you're there as a special deposit. And that's how you become a negotiable instrument. In court, you're standing there and you're a deposit inside of a bank. Okay, you're the, you're the material object. On the back end of that, the clerk, a clerk at a bank, is a unit of exchange. So she's exchanging that deposit into that Federal Reserve note or into that other negotiable instrument. And you're being traded on the open market under the QSIP concept, C-U-S-I-P. And under this, they're deriving all manner of revenue off of you. The Internal Revenue Service is their accounting department. It's not a taxing agency. Taxes are collected. Revenue is generated. Now, under um, the Constitution, the original Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, Clauses 1 and 2, maintain the General Welfare Clause. You are to be maintained on general welfare. Corporations took over your life when the attorney, um, Abraham Lincoln, came in under the 14th Amendment. And he called the person, that's a corporation. He said, that thing has life. That thing has rights superior to yours. And your estates have been stolen all this time. Now, what's happening <clears throat> is that every time you're injured, every time you're damaged, every time you're, you die, there's, it's called death derivatives. Every time something happens to you, it doesn't matter what it is, you are maintaining corporations on corporate welfare. And so you have to uh, stand up with us. You know, right now, we're seeing everything changing now, but it takes a lot of people to stand up. Otherwise, you know... What's the point of me standing up if all, all they have to do is off me if enough people don't know what we're doing? You know, it's simple to silence me. They just take me out, and then nobody else is aware of what's gone on. So everybody just needs to stand now as one, and we'll all be safer for it. Because we did win the case. Um, things are changing, but that just that that all depends on whether or not everybody else is going to stand up and, and say, Hey, I noticed that too. Wow, it is human trafficking, you know, and and uh, we just need to all stand as one, so we're all safe during this time. Tammy, I have a question that's out of the blue. Uh, some people are talking about uh, our ability to set off um, bills or accounts as they come in. Um, there's a project. Right, that that process. There's, there's la- when you do anything. The, the, the way that they took yeah, you is through, the way that they took you and, and manage your estate and, and flip you around and negotiate you through the negotiator arm, uh, just your process, that is the court process. It is called in Black's Law, negotiator arm just you. The attorney is the negotiator arm just door. He's the one that's tricking you out with the judge bank there. And so the, the ability to do that stems from the law merchant, okay? Then... In the late 1800s, they came in with the Negotiable Instruments Act. Well, that lasted about 50 years, and right after that, now remember, the law merchant is the Negotiable Instrument Act. Then you have, replacing the Negotiable Instrument Act, Uniform Commercial Code. It's the same law merchant. When you enter under statute, <clears throat> which is unlawful, by the way, since 1832 with the nullification proclamation that Andrew Jackson laid down, he said if you go into court and argue statute or legislation, you're to be held in contempt for doing that. So it, it, don't do that. So when you claim under UCC and A4V or whatever these set-offs are, you're actually subscribing to their their actions of commerce and law merchant, and and you're never going to get anything. They'll just come at you another way. They'll, they'll arrest you or whatever else. So you need to stand above them and take up your authority. And that's the hardest concept for most people to realize, is that you are a sovereign state. There's no such thing as a sovereign citizen. The United States was seceded in the 1600s by Congress. The Senate and the House of Representatives of the United States of America, which was never a geographical state. When you go to the Articles of Confederation, it says the United States of America is a style, S-T-I-L-E. 
that means that thing is only a chain of events. It's a, actions of Congress. So they're just raising you, right? So what we did was we came in and we sued them for human trafficking. That's what they've been doing since the 1600s. They've been human trafficking human beings across the globe. Now, you have an Australian accent, so I'm, a, I'm assuming that you, you're in Australia. The thing is, is that Congress got global governance in 1941 with the Atlantic Charter. They are the new world order. And so we need to hold, we all right. need to hold right. them accountable and take our states back. Wow. But we were all the same. We were the United States of being, and that's what Jesus was trying to say. He kept saying, I am, I am, I am. That's the United States of being that they usurped. And it doesn't matter what country we're well, in. Well, that's there what are, I was no plan borders. planning on saying. If I get If I get pulled up by the police and they want to know my name, and I say... I am what I am, or I am who I am. Is that a fair enough answer? Would I get away with that? Well, no, not right now. What we did was we came in and we we were able to overrule them with our authority. Now, when they hold you, <coughs> excuse me, when they hold you a taint by court process, it's because you're claiming the last. And that's the thing that they have a patent on. That's a description. So that describes what you can do, where you're from, whatever it is. But it's not the proper name. The proper name is just your first name or the first and middle in America because, I mean, my first and middle is Tamara K. K does not indicate a tribe or, or anything else. It's just part of my first name. So if you have a first name, you use the proper name. And in my process, the first thing you have to do is obliterate the franchise that they created upon your birth record and birth certificate, the docu docking instrument. We call it, um, it, we call it a nickname called the forgiveness dock. And I'll, I'll send that through to you after I'm done here. The second part of that, after you obliterate the franchise, then you come in as the executor over that estate. At that point in time, that executor, you are the authority, you are self-governing at that point and you come in with the ordinance of the estates, and that is your ordinance. You legislate it by quorum ability with four witnesses. That is your law, and it simply states to them, look, you guys are business licensed privateers. I'm letting you know up front that you are business licensed privateers. If you want to contract with me further, go ahead and arrest me, whatever you need to do, but here's my fee schedule, and on that, on the ordinance of the states, it has your fee schedule. Now, when they're tricking you out and human trafficking you, each estate is generating revenue upwards in the amount of $33 billion. These things are held in tranches, guaranteed at $2 billion each, through the QCIP accounts. Each mortgage, each court case, each whatever you have going on, you are not a stock, you're actually the stock option that's backing such as Dow Chemical Corporation, Johnson & Johnson, I, uh, IBM, AT&T, all of these things held in the holding corporations. So you have to obliterate the franchise and say, no, thank you, I'm not, I'm not a beneficiary. And that's part of the process is because people under ecclesiastical law, they had the right to do that, to protect you. Well, what had happened is they filled you up with constitutions. You are a vessel. You are the vessel. And as an empty vessel, when you subscribe to a constitution, that means it's inside of you. That's what fills you up. And so people are claiming to be an individual, a female, a male, a mom, a dad, um, a doctor, a teacher, all of these titles. Those things are all owned by the law merchant. Those are all concepts and they sell you these concepts and then on top of that you buy the rights to those concepts. Now when you go to the etymology on gender that signifies that you're a different species a different genus and that you're stock. You're just cattle on a farm because you're subscribing to their titles. 
Okay, so if you go into court, for example, and you're saying, well, I want my constitutional rights, but I also want my benefits. Well, under the doctrine of election, you can either have a right or a benefit, but never both. And if you accept a benefit, that's called the beneficium, you are accepting that you're no longer the heir. Okay, that, that means that they have to be protecting you under the law of infants. And so as that infant, you don't know who you are. They're claiming that you have a dual mind. I'm an individual. No, wait, I'm a female. No, wait, I'm a mom. No, wait, I'm a, I'm a doctor. Well, all of these things say that you're pretty much schizophrenic, and so they have the ability to protect you under the law of infants. Once you step out of that and say, no, I am the government. I am the executor over this estate. Here's my law. Here's my fee schedule. And you notice the Department of Energy, the Department of Transportation, you know, and all of the e force and you let them know, I am no longer willing to be tricked out. If you want a contract with me, here's my fee schedule. Now, you increase the liability, and this goes all the way back to the Commerce Clause of the Constitution. The Commerce Clause allowed them to act under Acts of Commerce and Private Acts. However, the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity and the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act stops them in the tracks and says, you can do whatever you want to. However, if you're caught human trafficking or caught harming a human being you, you're screwed this whole system is founded on insurance that means also that it is the game of chess and the game of risk taking over continents continents with tenants so if you subscribe to being a resident res means you're a thing citizen means you're a thing and you're subscribing to that policy as well and so you have to get in the mindset that you are I am. You are the authority. And that's what Jesus was trying to say. Don't go into court. First Corinthians 6. He says, don't you know that you're the judge? First Corinthians 6 says also you can only fornicate with the Lord God by giving it your body. And God hath both raised up the Lord God, so shall, shall he raise us up by his own power. Well, at a constitution in any country, you have what? You've delegated your authority over to somebody to represent you. You've given up your authority. You've vested power in the Lord God. But in reality, you are God. You are the Father. So is Patty. So is everybody else. And what that means is that you are the teacher. You are the one that shows me the truth. You are my judge that holds me accountable. You are the one that's supposed to be taking responsibility for myself and yourself and all of humanity. You are not to be giving this over to somebody else to represent you. That's where the word sin comes from. S-I-N in Latin means without. You have no idea who you are. And Jesus said over and over and over again, know thyself. Second Corinthians 13, he says, this is the third time I'm coming to you and I'm telling you, know thyself. And nobody was hearing because we've had all of these priests, scribes, and Pharisee interpreting the word of God for you. But that's your word. That's the truth that you speak. That is the way that you walk. You only walk one way. And under public law, your only rule is do no harm. Under ecclesiastical law, your only rule is do you know thyself. Sesri kevai, se tui kevai. That means with what cause do you live? I live for you. And it's worth $2 billion. You are me. Right. At $33 billion. But we, we're right, supposed now, to be Tammy, living for each other. Quick, quick question, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Can we get a little bit of legal advice from you? We have a situation where uh, the TCT members have um, secured a block of land in Missouri, 12 acres, and they're turning it into a really nice uh, project. And the block of land next door has become available, and I think it's $26,000. If you wanted that piece of land with your knowledge now, how would you go about it? 
Well, in December of last year, we um, put in a notice of fraudulent assignment against Congress that was not or argued in any way, shape, or form. And what they had done in Article 12 of the Articles of Confederation is they pledged and charged us to offset their debt, which is a fraudulent assignment. After that point in time, we did a reassignment, and we reassigned the General Welfare Clause for everybody, and that is what you're seeing now with the IMF um, notification. They're, they're overriding, I don't know how much you know about banking and judiciary, but uh, monetary policy at this time, as directed by the International Monetary Fund, is overriding fiscal policy, which it maintains the judiciary. That is what they're using. You are the uh, fiscal herd that they're talking about. They're, they're generating revenue based on herd men, uh, behavior, herd mentality, going all the way back to the original colony, which means farm. Now, I would not buy any property until this thing writes itself, which should be right around this corner here, because they, they could never argue anything. They've never owned anything. And specifically, <coughs> here... In where Missouri is located, <coughs> excuse me, the United States of America, aka Congress, aka the United States Incorporated, never actually owned any property at all. In 1802, they came in and they Congress pretended to be the church, and it says, "Hey, look, everybody, we're the church. We would like your authorization to donate 200,000 acres." of land per college because we're just so nice well the sheeple stood up and they clapped and they said yay let's do that but back up a little bit that church or congress never owned any land until that point in time and so you donated your land through this thing called a church to all the colleges and that's where the courts were established the district courts circuit courts and everything else that was all around the time of the 1789 Judiciary Act. Well, in this case that we just recently won in, in uh, July, we nullified the 1789 Judiciary Act because that's where the human trafficking is occurring. So according to the 1789 Judiciary Act, if you go into court, say in Missouri, on the second Tuesday in November, you're generating revenue into Maryland or into Boston, uh, Massachusetts, or you're generating uh, revenue into Pennsylvania. There's no courts or anything anywhere else. It only goes into those original 13 colonies owned by Congress or creating the appearance that it's owned by Congress because, again, during the time that they were colonizing back in the 1600s, um, it, it's easier if I give it an example. So right now, uh, my friend and I are going to go over to your house, okay? And my friend and I are going to enter into a confederacy, okay, because we're friends. That means we're just a, an incorporated state. And I'm going to go over to your house, and I'm going to tell you right now that I'm taking it over. And from here on out, you're going to owe me taxes if you want me to protect you or no, represent, uh, no taxation without representation. And so I'm going to pitch this to you, and I'm going to sell it to you. But it, in the end, it was just my friend and I that took over your place, right? And it's just mm -hmm. as unlawful now as it was then. But they've been getting away with it because of force, because of trick and deception. And that's what we're writing right now. We have to keep hammering them. We've already won the case. We just need everybody else to stand up with us. Otherwise, they just wipe us out. The Civil War, <clears throat> that was when people were standing up to them. Congress, the House of Representatives and the Senate, and Congress assembled made slavery legal okay that that was through action of law that had nothing to do with civilization or society and it, on its face it wasn't the citizens it was them then what happened they, is they pit us against each other and and they said well tammy you're racist and that other guy over there isn't racist when in reality it was the lawmakers that were racist and they had implicated these laws so that we would kill each other at their behest and they've always put on these presentations until now. Now they're being held accountable. Now it's stopping. Now it's it's time to end this because they they are as criminal on their face as they're, they as they ever were.
So you would like the word to rip around the truth uh, um, internet community of what you're doing and to stand strong with you. Absolutely, because it's already done. Doing, it's I just mean, the... Right. And, and if the sheeple don't stand up, then they just off us because, you know, nobody realizes what's gone on. Um, I do the, the audios. I've done No Borders. I have a show every week on Revolution Radio um, at freedomsubs.com called Le Leaving the Farm Now. Um, I do the No Borders, same thing, Saturdays uh, between 4 and 6 um, over in Scotland. And, and other things on my YouTube, um, I have more. I have I've been actually reading the um, uh, book four under the uh, church committee reports on my YouTube, Carry K32, and that explains what the CIA does, what their production company does. I mean, they have produced everything for you to see. And when when people get into the the um, concept of artificial intelligence, that's what you're filled up with. You are filled up with AI. All you know is all this consensus reality and all this gunk that, that Congress has been feeding you through its production company. Um, if you go to the, the um, Broadcasting Board of Governors, bbg.gov, you'll find that Congress owns the Broadcasting Board of Governors. Um, John Kerry, the Secretary of State, sits there on the Board of Governors, but they have international control of all civil media. They're just presenting to you all of this crap that's not real, artificial intelligence, and everybody needs to t turn off the television programming. They're programming. You are the most amazing computer ever. You process faster than any computer ever could. I mean, if you if you think about hearing and, and uh, vision itself, you are processing faster than any computer ever can or, or ha would have the ability to because you're running on, on uh, magnetic energy rather than, you know, kinetic or, or whatever else. Um, I mean, it's just, it's profound what they've done. They've perverted every aspect of your life in order to teach you to be a slave on the farm. Right. Brain it, it's like living in a cartoon. Right. It, it's exactly like living in a cartoon. Everything that you know is a fiction. You just have to divest yourself of all of that stuff knock it to the side and constantly ask yourself is this reality is this reality you know is this as to my nature um it, it's so it, it's so disgusting what they've done you know they've taught people to go after perfumes you know you, your males are attracted to certain perfumes but when you go look at these perfumes you're being attracted to the musk deer Come on, that's sick and perverted. They taught us that we're not attracted to each other by scent anymore because they're masking our scent. They're telling us to go after each other because of cars and and pants and and shirts and whatever else. That is absolutely backwards to your biology. You know, prior to their intervention, everything runs on frequency. We we didn't have language. Language was part of the the uh, process. You know that that is Babylonian theory is language and psychology used against you so that you stop communicating, you stop um, the, the ability to, to uh, communicate within frequency. I mean, it's absolutely perverted what they've done. Uh, Tammy, uh, we only have about uh, 15 minutes, but I got quite a few comments from the chat that I'd like to uh, put out there to you. Um, let me get to them. Okay, Nisi began a comment with, uh, this was when you were talking about the the uh, trafficking and, and such. We want our children back now. Thank you. We'll, we will be taking them home now. Um, she said, thank you so much, Tammy. She has a mad respect for you. Um, and uh, Kathy wants to know, how do you remember all those factoids? Um, and then Nisi wants to let you know that she is uh, giving you prayers for your strength and protection. And uh, she says, blessing to you and yours. Uh, extremely good advice. And to you, and huh? to you too. Um, okay. I love you guys. I mean, I'm not doing this uh, for, for any other reason. We're just supposed to be human. First Corinthians 13, it, it tells us everything that we should know. Um, 
But we're just supposed to be... Uh, I was going to read Confederacy real quick so that everybody uh, is on the same page. This is out of Black's Law Dictionary, first edition. Confederacy. <clears throat> In criminal law... Sorry about that. In criminal law, the association or banding together of two or more persons for the purpose of committing an act or furthering an enterprise which is forbidden by law, or which the lawful in itself becomes unlawful when made the object of the confederacy. Conspiracy is a more technical term for this offense. The act of two or more who combine together to do any damage or injury to another or to do any unlawful act. Now, the very last line says, see federal government. They have never been a lawful entity. They just took over everything. And we just need to push back. It's a lot smaller than most people think. You know, everybody feels oppressed. Everybody feels, um, you know, pushed down upon. But in reality, it's a board of governors. It's a corporation. A confederacy is just an incorporated state. And you have a set number of... Um, actual administrators and a whole bunch of minions and the minions they're turning on every day you know they're they're cannibalizing law enforcement now they're pitting ca uh, law enforcement against the citizens these directives when law enforcement agents are out killing people those are on the directives of the um, ACC the uh, um, corporate council the association of corporate council if you go to any municipality, you will find your corporate council. They're, all, they're also known as the Board of Commissioners. That is under a commission state. They're the ones that are directing these law enforcement agents and officers to kill human beings. Go after them. Don't go after the law enforcement as much as you can go after the Board of Governors or the corporate council members. Every time you see a child murdered by Child Protection Services through their actions, that is corporate council. That is the Board of Governors. And it's all maintained under the, the, the concept of human capital. And so, um, go to my my uh, YouTube channel, Tammy K 32 I've got these uh, audios up now. I've been showing uh, their their own uh, written documents, you know, the, the GAO on human capital and and their rules and their directives and their criminal acts are already evidenced in their own laws. None of them are, are lawful. You go to, um, anytime they're charging you with a speeding ticket or, or rolling through a stop sign or whatever, those things are, are defined under 27 CFR, which is the Code of Federal Regulations, 72.11, commercial crimes. Now, a commercial crime is anything against the laws of revenue. That means that you're, you're undercutting the Mafia and they're charging you for undercutting the Mafia. That's an unlawful act. And everybody needs to be aware of these things so that you can hold them accountable. They are only, only, only a criminal enterprise. They do not have any lawful authority to do these things. That would be like asking Charles Manson to be Congress and... Senate and House of Representatives, judge, attorney, a prosecutor, all at the same time, and then asking him to find himself guilty or not guilty. Same thing. All they are are psychopaths. They're just a criminal enterprise. And they've been using humanity for a very long time and getting it to patronize it as a religion. Government is now a religion because it's being worshipped. You pledge allegiance to its flag. You prey upon its courts. And all you have to do is stop doing that and start acting as to your own authority. And we have the process to do so. Also on my YouTube channel, you can hear one of us got stopped. Ryan and Adam got stopped, um, I don't know, it was a couple months ago in Illinois. Now they've done my process. Both of them at this time, uh, they had warrants against the, the old last name that they weren't claiming. However, they handed out the ordinance of the estates. We talked to the law enforcement. They called their corporate counsel. Their corporate counsel did not want the liability, and Ryan and Adam were let go because they can't afford the, the liability. We are a government. We are recognized as a government. We came in as the United States on behalf of everybody, 
and we have established the United States court, lowercase United States, because the the action of capitalizing is is pr capitalizing on you, taking you and using you to generate revenue, and that was what was usurped back in the 1600s, and again with the Articles of Confederation, the Constitution itself, um, the 1794. Uh, uh, Treaty of Amity, Commerce, and Navigation, and that's one of the major ones with the posting ability and charging you for uh, using a false or fictitious name under 18 U.S.C. 1342. Just get rid of all that. Stop claiming to be a citizen. Stop claiming to be a female or a male and, and garnering rights because they sell you the concept that you're female or male. But in our natural state, we already know what we are. We already know what to do with, with our bodies, right? I mean, we're not, we're, we're biology. And um, we need to just step out of all their concept. And that's what it says in Revelation 18. That is my absolute favorite book ever is Revelation. Because it maintains what happens when we take up our authority and God realizes who they are. Because at that time, Jesus is no longer on the cross. In Latin and Greek, Jesus means your earth. It's G-E space S-U-I-S. And when you come in and claim the earth, it's no longer crucified under the coronation charter. Wow. God didn't know who he was. And that's the only reason that Jesus was crucified in the beginning. He wasn't forsaken by a father. He had no idea who he was. He wasn't able to pull himself off that cross. Well, we have about six minutes left in the show. So, Tammy, if there's anything that you want to leave with the listeners, um, anything that you want them to know, anything at all? Just anything be well. Uh, we teach We teach on Skype. Uh, you can find me at T. Pepperman on Skype. I'm on Facebook. Um, Bono's Entertainment over on YouTube, as well as Tammy K. 32 um, again, we've got shows. Bo has a show on uh, Wednesdays, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. Uh, you can hear me on No Borders over at Scottish Sovereigns on the Land .com every Saturday, 4 to 6. And then again on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com from 6 to 8. We have Leaving the Farm on Studio A. Um, everybody just needs to realize who they are and go back and read the New Testament again especially Matthew uh, Corinthians and of course Revelation because <laughs> for, for example the etymology on Apocalypse comes to, from uh, Apo and Calyptine meaning to bring forth from a hidden state it doesn't mean that the world's gonna go to hell it doesn't mean that everybody's gonna turn into zombies it means that you are going to bring forth and reveal, or as in Revelation, what's actually occurring. And at this time, look at the evidence. In every court case that you have going on, in everything, the evidence of their crimes are already in there. They're already human trafficking. It's written in stone. And get a hold of me, because as um, we went through this case, I was acknowledged by the State Department to be the clerk of courts for the United States court. All I need is your evidence, and I can charge them for what they've done upon you. And it all goes through the Secretary of State again, which is the Clarence House. Um, when our judge came in, he, he ordered and he declared that they are dead. They are the thing that's in the holding corporation at this time. They are the thing that has to back the Federal Reserve note. It's no longer the human being. And, you know, with the Pope putting on this show saying, well, there's not going to be any more immunity, there never was. <clears throat> the delineation between a sovereign state and a foreign state is defined under 28 U.S.C. 97, Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. And the only difference is, is a sovereign state is adhering to public law, which means do no harm. A foreign state is adhering to acts of commerce and private acts, which are executive orders. Uniform Commercial Code is one big conglomeration of private acts and executive order, or the commercial acts and, and uh, private acts. Now, any time that any nation, a foreign nation, such as your county 
or your local municipality is perpetrating under uniform commercial code they're acting under acts of commerce and private acts meaning they're a foreign state they have no sovereignty and they have absolutely absolutely no immunity and they're running the risk of assuming the charges that they put upon you under 46 United States Code USC chapter 311 and 313 and that and those are same rules and it goes back into banking if you want to delve into it further um, 12 USC subsection 73 because the attorney oath um, they're taking oaths to maintain that they are not hypothecated but they are if they get caught under 46 USC uh, chapter 311 and 313 and so it, it it's all a big um, game it is a game of chess it is a game of risk and apparently we've won and the IMF agreed with us with its uh, directives from July maintaining the unwinding and they're just they're they're absolutely cannibalizing right now and that's what Jesus said that, that they're to be killed as they killed us and what that means is that they've been hypothecated you know you were killed by document hypothecation and it's the same thing they have been killed by document they've been declared dead under 38 USC 108 38 USC subsection 108 the um, seven-year absence presumption of death and it was overcome when we came in and looked for them we asked for a judge to be there and only an attorney in a black dress showed up so we had no other option than to declare the judge dead uh, bankers dead they were representing each other and all known fictions dead under the uh, also under the 1929 Geneva Convention which maintains that they are the prisoner of war we know who our government is <clears throat> and so we cannot be held as prisoners of war because that was their premise they were saying they were protecting us we didn't have a government since ours were bankrupt in 33 and so they came in as corporate governance to hold us prisoners of war until we found a new government well I know who my government is I patronize my own house and their government attorneys especially they have pledged their allegiance to the bar association which is fiction it's not even a living being and so they have no other option than to be held prisoners of war for their protection thank you Tammy it's been a real treat having you here on the show and you're welcome to come back anytime uh, we're here every Sunday oh, thank you for having me. oh you're welcome we're here Sundays 8 to uh, 10 central time so you can call in anytime and we all love to hear the information that you have to say. Awesome. So thank thank you. you for having me. I love you guys. Be well. Oh, thank you. We love you, too. See, do you have yeah. any closing comments? So sorry, Patty. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. I just wanted to let everybody know that coming up, we have Beyond the Looking Glass with Ravana 9000. Um, and uh, there will be a short break in the stream. And then uh, we will be back with Ravana, and hopefully he'll have the sound issues. I think uh, it has to do with how many calls are on at the same time on Skype. So we'll find out if his uh, sound is any better then. But uh, excellent show, Snowhawk. And Tammy, if you're still listening, you rock. And, and it was awesome to have you here. Uh, I just have to listen to you a lot more. It's a good thing we have this on podcast because there's so much information that she puts out there. It's just, you know, hard to suck it all in there. But uh, she's she's really brilliant. She really is. Oh, yeah, I just agree. She's amazing. Yep. It's for everybody that, you know, if download the podcast so you can listen to the information over and over again because that is a lot of information that she put out there. And it's jam-packed and... You probably will have to listen to it a couple times just to be able to uh, That's right. get it all I'll, in. I'll, hmm. I'll try and put it up as quickly as I can. And then share it with your friends, too, and put it on Facebook. And if you want to put it on your website, go ahead. Just all the information is free for all. We're all in this together. We're all here to help everyone. And that's just our goal. We just want to spread the word. So and if you want to help spread it, go go for it. We're not going to get in your way. And so, uh, the show's over, so the Ron is going to be coming up, and we want to thank everybody for listening, all the listeners for listening, all the people that are going to be downloading the podcast, thank you for downloading it and listening. 
Um, we'll be back again next week, next Sunday, uh, 8 p.m. till 10 p.m. Central Time. And please stay tuned for Ravana's show. And we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.